and you should all see a little pop up there asking you to consent to the recording. So just click that and continue. And then without any further ado, I'll hand over to Stephen and Janice from Maynooth to tell us all about Stack. Hi, um, my name is Janice and I'm here with my colleagues Stephen Nulty and Tony Waldron. We work as support staff in the Department of Mathematics and Statistics in Maynooth University. Um, we're just going to share a little bit of our experiences uh, of using the stack question type in Moodle. So just to give a little bit of context, um, pre-pandemic, we had very limited use of automated quizzes in Moodle. We use them in a proficiency course and as part of the mathematical computing um, segments of some of our second and third year modules. Um, at that time, the question types that we were using were predominantly close and some MCQs. Um, um, when the pandemic hit, like everyone else, there was a massive switch on, online and part of that um, meant that we started using quizzes in much more um, modules and in much broader way for both continuous assessments and for our final exams. And that initial switch, we had to just cope as best we could with what was available. But then in the summer, we were given the opportunity by our local Moodle support to test out alternative question types because we had realized that what was available wasn't really sufficient for what we were trying to do. So during the summer of 2020, we tested a number of different types and um, additional question types were added to Moodle for the start of the academic year 2021. Uh, and one of those was Stack. At the moment now we're returning in person, so there has been a switch back to paper-based exams, um, but we are still continuing to use quizzes as part of our continuous assessments. Um, during the pandemic, we very much focused on summative quizzes um, and uh, now we've kind of split into using more formative and summative quizzes um, in these modules. So um, there's a lot of work going on in the background. The last year, my colleague Stephen has been spending a lot of time working on adding JSX graph based questions to our question bank. And just to flag that generally all of our work is done in conjunction with our lecturing staff to come up with these questions. So just to say why we ended up kind of going with Stack, uh, I suppose the main reason is the flexibility it offered us. So Stephen will go through more detail, but just to give a rough idea of what we're looking at, Stack allows you to have multiple input types and um, the algebraic expressions is particularly useful because you can check for algebraic equivalents, but they also have matrices, numerical, multi-choice, et cetera. And there's a full list of possibilities given there. It also allows users to check um, the validity of their input. So you can it will give them feedback on what it interprets their input to be. It allows for randomization. It allows for complicated marking schemes. Well, Stephen will go into that in more detail. And as I said, it has JSX graph support. So I'm gonna hand over to Stephen now and he's gonna go through more specific examples of what's available. Thanks, Janice. So, um... Like Jenna said, I'm just going to try and go through some uh, examples of the different features of Stack, and I'm going to try and show some uh, examples in the kind of context of questions that we've been using uh, over the last couple of years. So uh, the first thing that was mentioned was that Stack supports a number of different input types. So the first one I'd, I'd want to present is just a simple numerical uh, input type. So this is going to support uh, decimal answers, fractions answers. And then other types of uh, numerical answers like uh, expressions involving square roots or mathematical constants. And then for expressions that involve variables, there's an algebraic input. So this could be things like uh, polynomials or uh, trigonometric log logarithmic exponential functions, some combinations of these. And uh, this will be available then to be graded with the algebraic input type. <clears throat> so that, that obviously allows for a number of different types of questions, but in particular in uh, linear algebra, um, it's it's very useful to have, for instance, uh, matrix input types. So Stack supports two different uh, types of matrix inputs. Uh, the first is a fixed sized uh, matrix. So uh, Stack will present the students with a, an array of boxes that's specified by the the solution, uh, the the correct answer. So when the students um, see this, they can type type in their answer into the boxes, and then it'll be graded as a single uh, matrix uh, by stack. And then the, the second option is a, a variable size matrix. So rather the students are given an empty box and they can choose what size matrix to input. And they do this by uh, using spaces and new lines for the rows and columns. So um, 
So this is particularly useful then, for instance, if uh, if the thing you're trying to assess is actually partly the size of the matrix, like in matrix multiplication, for instance. So um, Stack also supports a, a number of multiple choice uh, input types. So the first one just on the left is to show just an example of a dropdown question type. So this is just, um, this is in the context of a question about uh, convergence of series. So you can see it's just, uh, it's part of, it's, it's part of another question, a longer question, but, um, uh, so this is about the uh, the root test for series, but you know this is particularly useful when there's a single correct answer, and uh, specifically for kind of text-based answers like whether the series converges or it doesn't converge or the test is inconclusive. It's it's particularly handy to be able to fit this in line, for instance. So then there's also a radio button option. Uh, again, this is particularly useful when there's a single correct answer, and it's quite nice that uh, Stack also supports uh, the use of LaTeX then in. Um, in these uh, radio button options. So for instance, in this question here in the middle, there's a question about uh, finding the Taylor series of a function, and then the student can choose the correct uh, series representation. And then the, the last one that we found very useful is the option for a checkbox uh, input type. So this is this is uh, particularly useful then if you have multiple correct and incorrect answers, and you'd like to do some kind of partial grading based on that. So uh, as mentioned, uh, one other very useful feature of Stack is uh, the fact that it provides input validation to the students. So as the students are typing, uh, they will see their answer uh, shown back to them in, in a nice kind of LaTeX format. And it also provides some um, uh, additional help as well. So for instance, here in the algebraic input, it's telling the students what variables were interpreted in their answer. So that's uh, particularly useful for uh, linear algebra or multivariable calculus and things like this. So um, again, uh, in terms of the input validation, uh, when the students are filling in uh, matrices, the uh, stack will again uh, present the answer back to them uh, before they have before they submit it, and it will demonstrate the matrix uh, in a LaTeX format. And particularly useful as well as the fact that it will tell them if they've missed any boxes. So if there's a big five by five matrix or bigger, uh, it's particularly useful to know if you've skipped anything or there's any other problems with your input before you uh, choose to submit your answer. So. The numerical input type also provides some specific feedback uh, in terms of validation. So. In particular, if the students have typed anything that, that contains variables or some kind of equation with variables, it'll tell them before they submit that there's an, that there's a problem with their answer and you know that this uh, this input is actually expecting a number rather than a variable or an, or an equation, for instance. So that's particularly useful um, when you want to let the students know that they that that the the answer like a probability or something is expected to be a number and not in some other format. So. Uh, one key feature then of using stack over some other question types is the fact that it supports randomization. So this is particularly um, useful, for instance, um, in both kind of formative and uh, summative assessments. So it, you might um, you might find it particularly useful if you want students to get different questions from each other. Um, or for instance, maybe you want to um, let students have multiple attempts at a question and you can even give them answers in between and let them retry over and over again. Uh, just to improve their their understanding of the concepts. So this is just an example of a, a question asking for the second derivative of a function, and you can have a look at randomizing, say, exponents or powers of variables or or constants. And just below is shown a couple of different um, expressions and their and their derivatives. So uh, Stack also supports the option to deploy fixed versions of the question. So there might be more versions of the question available than. Um, than you necessarily show to the students, but Stack allows you to kind of pre-select a certain number of them and test them before uh, the student sees them. So this kind of helps prevent any potential errors or other um, uh, problems, with, you know, problematic questions from reaching the students. It gives you a chance to test them. And in particular as well, when you're looking at larger scale assessments, uh, it improves performance basically when um, you've deployed some number of variants uh, rather than having to randomly generate a bunch of um, a bunch of simultaneous or you know a large number of, of question question variants uh, for a large number of concurrent users, for instance, there's a significant performance increase there. So this is just one other um, example I'd like to give of randomization, which is that you don't just have to think about randomizing uh, numerical variables. You can think of, for instance, randomizing text within a question. So in this particular um, in this particular question, uh, the the different distributions and the multiple choice answers are the same, but rather the question text is being randomized. So one is asking for a distribution for number of heads when you toss a coin five times and another is a number of earthquakes to happen. And you know the answer will depend on the text shown to the student. So 
Uh, as mentioned as well, one other feature that's uh, very useful for assessment is the support of some more complicated marking. So uh, one thing we found particularly useful is this kind of idea of uh, follow through marking. So, you know, the students in a multiple part question might uh, might be likely to make some mistakes. And if they make one mistake early on, that's going to carry through and it's going to, you know, penalize them or they're, they're likely to get the, the uh, following uh, parts incorrect as well. But Stack allows you to pass um, answers between parts of questions. So for instance, if they've gotten part B wrong, you might be able to use their answer from part B and, and, and then use it to grade part C with, with the kind of expected, um, the expected uh, in quotes, correct answer say, to give them either marks or partial marks. So this is this is particularly useful then for, for, um, for either for feedback or for you know, awarding kind of partial marks and quiz and, and uh, summative assessment. So uh, as it was mentioned just more recently, we've been looking at adding in JSX graph based questions uh, to our question bank. So JSX graph is a, a JavaScript plotting library, and it's particularly nice that it supports interactive graphics. So I mean, this could be useful either for visual aids uh, to help you uh, solve a question or just to demonstrate some concepts visually. So Stack actually supports uh, JSX graph with this uh, special JSX graph code block that you can include into the, into the question text. And then it also supports grading uh, certain variables that you can pass from JSX graph to stack. And then this will be graded by the CAS. So you can use this then for, uh, for grading the actual graphics themselves or for providing some feedback. So, uh, so I'm just gonna give a few examples of this. Uh, the first is just like, is just some uh, randomized graphics. So here the students will see a random number line and this could be an interval or multiple uh, disjoint intervals. Um, and then they'll be given a set of multiple choice questions, uh, multiple choice options, and they'll pick the correct one to match with the, with the interval that's been shown to them. Um, and then just as an example of using kind of graphics as an aid to get an answer, this is to, a question to try and find the inverse of a function. Now the students could do this algebraically, but you can also, for instance, provide them um, some kind of inter interactive graphic to help them visualize the inverse. So here uh, the students can actually click this uh, change function button and it will cycle through the different uh, plots of the function. And then hopefully they'll be able to see which, um, which, which uh, graphically, which uh, function is the inverse of the given function. So uh, on the point of interactive visuals, um, here's another question um, where they want to apply a vertical line test to check if a curve that's been shown to them uh, is actually a function of a certain form. And then this uh, horizontal, this uh, vertical dotted line can actually be dragged around by the student, and it will show the intersections then with the curve. So the, the students can apply the vertical line test to to tell if the the actual curve they've been given is a function or not. Um, and then just to mention then, as I said, you can actually use the graph itself as an answer. So in this in this type of question, the students are asked to represent an interval on the number line. So what they can do is they can drag the endpoints of the interval around. And then they can also click these buttons to change and um, to change the type of endpoint. End so whether or not it's a closed or open endpoint uh, can be changed. And then when the students students uh, uh, click submit, uh, this will be graded then by stack. So based on the the endpoint submitted and whether or not they've chosen open or closed. And you can pick uh, feedback on this and 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 different grading is up to you. Uh, in in the background. So, and then just one more example of using the graph as an answer. Uh, the students here have been given a, a particular function, and then they've been asked to transform uh, the graph to sketch either some sort of translations or shifted arguments to the function. And so here the students actually can grab this uh, red point and just drag it around. And then they can use this flip function to flip the function and uh, across a horizontal line through the red point. And so that should enable them to, to answer the different uh, random versions of this question. And again, it'll be graded based on the location of the, the red point and whether or not they've chosen to flip the curve or not. Um, so I'll, I'll just pass back to Janice then to give a summary. So um, thanks very much, Stephen. So just, I think we've gone faster than we intend, but never mind. Uh, so just to summarize, um, the main reason we went for Stack at the time was, as I said, it's flexibility. So it's built on, um, you, sorry, it uses a computer algebra system in the background that's based on Maxima, and that provides a very powerful tool and gives us a lot of options um, when we're creating question types. So again, summarizing randomization, you can randomize numbers, list elements, and that in itself allows you to randomize text. The complex marking, so by default, um, Stack has multiple nodes, so you can allow for partial marks based on 
maybe guesses as to where students will go wrong if you want to try and allow for certain obvious mistakes you can give partial marks that way or as Stephen showed you can uh, take uh, an incorrect part of a question and use that to give students partial marks later on in the question the validation is very welcome by the students as well the fact that they're shown how their uh, answers are interpreted is is good it kind of prevents some possible errors feeding into the system there are multiple feedback options and um, which can be really useful in formative quizzes when you're trying to maybe prompt students in the right direction this is something we've started looking at but haven't spent as much time on as we expected and um, Stephen has spent most of the last few months working with JSX graph and um, there's just one thing I should note and um, is just that uh, stack to get the maximum use out of stack, you really do need to know a bit of, well, a lot of LaTeX and Maxima together to get the most out of it. And to really use JSX Graph, you'd have to have some knowledge of JavaScript. So just, just to flag that point. So thank you very much for listening. Um, and I'll hand back over to Rob. So it's over to you folks. Oh, I could start. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thanks, Rob, for the invite. Um, and I really enjoyed that presentation there from our Manus colleagues. So some really good practical advice there. So uh, my name is Louise O'Gorman and I, along with my colleague uh, Yvonne um, today, we're delighted to speak with you about the Advanced Centre for Professional Education. So I'm the Advanced Centre Manager based in ATU Sligo. And I'll give you a brief overview of our background and our aims and objectives. Um, Yvonne will there then share with you in more detail how the Advanced Centre uses Moodle um, from an instructional design perspective. So the Advanced Centre, um, it's a HEA Human Capital Initiative Pillar 3 funded project. It will be similar to other HCI um, projects in Ireland like the DCU Futures or the UL at Work project from the University of Limerick. And the overarching aim of all of the HCI Pillar 3 projects is to identify and address the future skills needs in Irish, in Irish industry. And in our case, we're focusing on digital transformation in industry. We were founded um, two, two and a half years ago now, and our founding members are UCD, uh, what was IT Sligo and is now the Atlantic Technological University after our merger last year, and colleagues in um, TU Dublin uh, in the Tala campus. Um, and what we found was that people working full time can sometimes find it difficult to take on a full award, either because of lack of time, not sure about the commitment, or because they don't want or need all of the learning on offer. So our aim is to be more flexible by offering um, a modular approach to, to, to students. Um, and the results are a series of accredited digital transformation focused modules and special purpose awards, which could ultimately lead to full awards if that's what the learner wants, ranging from QQI level six up, up to nine. And we're also cognizant of the fact that employees as well as companies want to have this more flexible approach to learning. Um, and in, in developing uh, appropriate modules in this area of digital transformation, we've been supported in the Advanced Centre by a group of industry partners, some of whose logos you can see on the, on the screen there. And they've been really supportive in guiding us on pertinent areas to develop um, and informing us on the, the, the trends with respect to new, um, new technologies. So to make it as easy as possible for the learner to find out uh, what they need, we decided um, to focus on 11 thematic areas, which we can see then on the, the next slide, please, Yvonne. Um, the three core themes uh, we identified as being the data science, cybersecurity, and software engineering, and then the remaining eight themes are of more applied nature. So ranging from um, digital transformation in manufacturing, through to health data analytics and financial math there, for example. And learners can search within a team and then apply for um, the single module that they want. So moving on there, please, Yvonne. Um, that's the, the outward facing element of the Advanced Centre. And then inwardly in parallel, we're looking to support our academic colleagues in the teaching and learning area. And there's a couple of ways that, that we're trying to do that. 
in a lot of our modules, we're teaching students about students about the concept of digital transformation. So it really behoves us to try and adopt some of these digital transformation tools ourselves and to test them and to see where we can improve our teaching and learning. So that's one area. Um, particularly in ATU Sligo, we have a history of offering a wide range of part-time online programmes to industry over the last 15 years or so. And that's what we'd like to achieve with the Advanced Centre is to keep improving and enhancing that online offering by engaging with our academic colleagues and our instructional design colleagues. And this can then serve the purpose of, of, of say, future-proofing um, um, colleague skills there. And finally, using new technologies, we'd like to develop opportunities for colleagues to um, have more bespoke content and how we use the Moodle platform in particular is, is, is crucial for this. So with that in mind, I'll hand you over to Yvonne, who will speak um, to this aspect in more detail. Right, thanks Louise um, for that. Um, so yeah, my name is Yvonne Sarsfield and I'm the instructional designer at the Advanced Centre. And my main focus is on the upskilling of faculty staff in digital transformation technologies at the Advanced Centre. Um, as faculty staff or professionals who are dedicated to teaching, it's important that they possess educator specific digital competencies to effectively use digital technologies for teaching. And the Advanced Centre has, out, has outlined the following goals. Research and identify appropriate technologies, evaluate the practical and technical environment, assessment through running pilots to consider suitability, make recommendations for the digital resources, and organize and make available the, these technologies and resources, and also to foster a community of practice. So when researching and identifying suitable technologies, it's important to ensure that they meet the needs of the faculty staff and the students. It's important to research and identify technologies that can enhance the learning experience, increase student engagement and provide faculty staff with the necessary tools to create effective and innovative teaching methodologies. And by investing time and effort in this initial step, the Advanced Centre will ensure that we're providing faculty staff with the right tools to support student learning, increase student success and improve overall teaching effectiveness. The next step is to evaluate the platforms and, pro and, and products that have been identified. And this is important to ensure that they are reliable, they're user friendly and cost effective. This evaluation includes assessing the quality and reliability of the technology, as well as its ability to integrate with the existing ecosystem of the Advanced Centre and ATU. The evaluation process also considers the technical support and training required to ensure that the faculty staff can effectively use the technology. And it will also consider accessibility, privacy, and the security of the technology. Um, pilots involve running a trial period of the technology platform for a, a selected group of faculty staff and or students. Um, and that's to identify any potential issues and assess its effectiveness and get feedback from the faculty staff involved. And this process enables the identification of any gaps in training or technical support required to ensure the successful implementation of the technology. And the feedback from the pilots is also used to uh, refine the recommendations to be made. So recommendations are made based on the findings from the previous uh, steps, and the Advanced Centre will develop a comprehensive list of digital resources. And these recommendations will be based on the identified gaps, effectiveness, suitability of the technology. The recommendations will also include any necessary training and technical support required to ensure the successful implementation of the technology. And providing an adv advanced centre Moodle page, uh, faculty staff can access the identified or recommended digital resources and share their experiences with other faculty members. The page will serve as a platform to request training to ensure that they're using um, those technologies effectively. And it can also be used to track the progress and efficiency of the digital resources and to continually improve the delivery and effectiveness of them. To foster a community of practice among faculty staff, the Advanced Centre project will leverage the features and tools available in Moodle. And some specific ways that this can be achieved include discussing emerging trends and technologies, best, uh, sharing best practices and seek advice from colleagues, 
collaborate to create and edit documents such as guidelines for the, the specific use of, of um, a specific digital technology, organize and facilitate webinars and online workshops where faculty staff can learn from experts in the field and share their own experience um, and resources can be shared, reviewed and rated by other faculty staff, promoting the discovery and use of, of high quality resources. So the Moodle page will serve, as I said, as a comprehensive resource hub, providing access to all of the identified or recommended resources, as well as those that are cu currently being piloted. Um, this will include software, hardware, platforms that are available via the Advanced Centre, along with detailed instructions on how to access them. Um, for example, in the case of um, our VR headsets, the page will provide information on the number of devices that are available and how they can be borrowed by faculty staff for use in their projects. Um, the page will be a repository for other digital resources that, that may be helpful, uh, such as um, instruction guides, ebooks, explainer videos, 360 video footage, 3D assets and virtual tours. So the Moodle page can be used to set up pilots for testing purposes. And here are some of the tools and the features. Course creation. So Moodle allows you to create courses specifically designed for running pilots. And you can create a course with a specific set of objectives, learning outcomes and resources related to the technology or platform being piloted. Group management. Groups can be created within the course and participants assigned. And again, this can be useful for selecting a specific group of faculty, staff, and our students to participate in the pilot. And the forum feature allows participants to discuss and provide feedback. Quizzes can be created to test participants' knowledge and understanding, which can be used to identify any gaps in training or technical support required. And the tracking feature provides valuable, valuable insights into the effectiveness of digital resources and allows educators to make data-driven decisions to improve their teaching strategies. Case studies will also be shared on Moodle. Um, these can be shared with faculty, staff, students, and other stakeholders through the course page or a specific forum dedicated to discussing the, the case study. The case study can be analyzed and results discussed, providing valuable feedback on the effectiveness of the resources used, identify any gaps in knowledge or skills required to address any problem identified, and suggest improvements for future projects. The insights and feedback from the case studies can be used to inform future projects. And faculty staff can use the information to improve their teaching methods, develop new projects, and refine existing programs. Progress and effectiveness of digital resources can be tracked through Moodle's reporting and analytics features. So here are some essential tools and features to enable training and support for faculty staff. Um, the multimedia support, such as audio, video, and image integration. This feature can be used to enhance the learning experience and support various learning styles. Collaborative learning, as mentioned, there are features such as forums, chats, wikis, and groups. And these features can be used to facilitate group discussions and peer-to-peer -peer learning, assessment and feedback, uh, such as quizzes, assignments, and surveys. And Moodle offers a feature to use to issue badges and certs uh, upon the completion, completion of a learning uh, activity, which uh, we may also uh, use. So Moodle can be used to foster a community of practice. Um, and here are some of the features, again, that will allow us to do that. The forums um, to create discussion boards where faculty staff can post and respond to messages and questions. Groups to work together on specific projects, to share resources and collaborate on ideas. Messaging allows for private communication between faculty staff, enabling them to collaborate and share information in real time. Wikis to create and collaborate on a shared document or website, and this feature can be used to create knowledge bases, FAQs, and other collaborative resources. And blogs, um, we're hoping that um, we can create and share blog posts to share best practice, reflect on teaching experiences, and discuss emerging trends and technologies. So now we will have a look at the Advanced Central Moodle page. Um, so just keep in mind that it is still a work in progress and not yet accessible to the faculty, but it will uh, demonstrate how we are filling in with content to meet our objectives. So I'll just actually share the live site to you now. So you can see we've, we've already um, began to populate it. Uh, we're in the early to mid stages of the project, so we still have a, a lot more work to do. Um, but for example, in the virtual reality area here, we're putting in this, um, some information, even something as simple as using a glossary of terms. For, for those who aren't familiar with this new technology, we're, we're building that up as a resource 
um, you know, to, to, to help with that. Um, also regarding the, the MetaQuest headsets, information here on everything from a risk assessment uh, template right down to how to create an avatar and anything that we think would be useful for, for others um, on, uh, going forward in, the, in these projects. Details of um, projects that we've already had, pilots that, that we've run already, um, and access to the recordings from those. Um, and just information we're building up on the moment on, on some new um, pilots that we're, we're about to run um, quite soon. And we'll also um, address some of the challenges and barriers that we encountered along the way. Um, you know, for example, difficulties associated with procurement and software screening and, and data protection. And to aid in facilitating the process going forward, we'll be adding in supplementary information and guidelines there, which will um, which will be included, which I'm sure will be will be very useful to to everybody. Um, so just to, to wrap up, there are several potential legacies that can result from the advanced center, increased digital competency. The faculty staff will have acquired the digital competencies necessary to effectively use digital technologies for teaching, allowing them to create engaging and effective learning experiences for their students. Enhanced teaching and learning, the avail availability of a repository of digital resources and assets, and the upskilling of faculty staff in digital competencies can lead to an enhanced teaching and learning experiences for students, resulting in improved outcomes. Sustainable digital culture, the project may help to foster a, a sustainable digital cu culture within the uh, university where faculty staff are encouraged to continuously uh, develop and utilize digital tech to en enhance teaching and learning. Improved recruitment and retention, the project can serve as a selling point for the university, demonstrating a commitment to providing faculty staff with the necessary tools and resources to excel in their roles. And this can help with recruitment and retention efforts. Increased collaboration, the project can help to promote collaboration among faculty staff and across the ATU as we share our best practices and work together to implement digital tech in, in our teaching and learning. Um, informing future projects, the project provides um, valuable insights and feedback that can be used to develop new programs, refine existing ones and improve overall educational outcomes across the ATU. So overall, the legacy of the project can be long lasting and transformative. So if, if anyone's interested in uh, obtaining additional information or exploring potential ideas, please don't hesitate to contact us. Um, we're, we're, we're more than willing to help, um, you know, to share our knowledge and to collaborate on, on any projects. And I'm very open to any suggestions on, on how I could use Moodle because I'm not an expert. So, um, so anyone who's got any ideas on, on how I could use it um, in this project, I'd be very grateful for that also. So thank you very much. Excellent. Um, thank you very much, uh, Yvonne and Louise. I'll just pause the recording there now.